Okay guys, what is up here? I am Wrestling Fan for Life 98 version 1 and I am finally back on here to, uh, you know, to bring you guys a new video and just to go over some things uh, and to give you a preview, a summer preview of uh, my channel really and the summer preview for, you know, WWE and All Elite Wrestling. Well, touching on All Elite Wrestling, I guess, as well and, and kind of just going over... You know, what again that we're, we're going to, you know, have uh, to expect, what we'll be expecting this summer when it comes to both companies. In particular, again, you know, uh, more so with WWE, because uh, again, I'm going to come to that, you know, I I'll get to that. Uh, to going over that in the minute but uh, I just want to quickly uh, start off by uh, again I have to you know j just uh, say guys that thank you if you've been patient and if you've been waiting or well, not waiting but if if you know if, if you've uh, been uh, understanding and patient enough uh, for me to uh, to come up and to bring a new upload because originally I was going to try to find some time uh, you know this past week that we've had just gone to try and come on here to give you you know my my thoughts about WWE King and Queen of the Ring 2024 which uh, took place over a week ago now uh, last uh, Saturday back on the 25th of May and I was also again going to try and do a you know a preview and predictions for King and Queen of the Ring as well but none of that you know in Saudi Arabia in Saudi Arabia but none of uh, that really came together and again it's just been down to the fact that uh, you know I've been having a lot going on with work because it, it, it's a busy time with what's uh, with my work and that at the moment guys and 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 it's just plain and simple like it, it's we're now coming into uh you know summer as, as i've just mentioned because we are now on to uh the second of june now well, well you know but we are coming in just to that more busy time of the year now just that busy sort of stretch that we're getting into like just before that we get into you know the summer holidays here that we go into the summer holidays uh, starting uh, next month in July because we've just had, well, there's just been a half term week around, uh, you know, England or at least again around where I live, uh, you know, this past week. So, I mean, yeah, like, so, so, so just, uh, there's just been a lot that's been uh, kind of going on, you know, behind the scenes, guys which has led to me, you know, not doing that many videos. Well, again, that's why I, I just didn't quite get enough time to try and fit in to do a predictions, uh, a preview for King and Queen of the Ring. But then at the same time, it probably wasn't really worth doing a predictions for King and Queen of the Ring because in fairness, it was pretty predictable anyway with how the matches like all kind of uh, turned out anyway, with, with how the the, the, uh, the PLE event turned out. But I will say that it was a pretty good uh, Saudi Arabia event, though. It definitely, again, was, was a, a step up in terms of uh, the quality of like recent uh, Saudi shows. Well, or Saudi shows in the last, you know, again, going back to the last five, six years when WWE started to go out there to the Middle East while going out to do these uh, Saudi Arabia events. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the King and Queen of the Ring, you know, which they brought back this year was definitely a, a pretty good success. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not going to say overall that that I was thrilled completely with, with the, the PLE, with the event, but I still think it was a good way to just, you know, just to bring back King and, you know, King and Queen of the Ring this year. And just to kind of, uh, just to sort of get it going again. I mean, but what I guess again, you know, like uh, what I, I did see it in another video that somebody pointed out that I, I do think it could be better if you actually like did have like a separate tournament though still or, or that you had the actual tournament, you know, being on the event itself or that like, or the quarterfinals to the to the actual final you know being on the actual event but i get it i mean with the way that 
that Triple H likes to structure these PLE events now, that this is just the way that he likes to to do things at the moment. This is the way how he likes to structure these cards is by just having more, less matches, like, you know, less frequent matches and to just have more time for matches to, to get more time. So, you know, it, it was what it was. But I will say again, you know, Randy Orton versus Gunther was, was a really good uh, finals, though. That was a really good final that we had uh, with Gunther and Randy, though. Uh, again, it did have its controversy ending, which we all, you know, saw that, you know, with, with uh, Gunther getting that, you know, pin on Randy, that crucifix pin, that, again, that kind of where Randy had, you know, had his shoulder up. So, uh, his shoulder, you know, wasn't down on the mat when, when the ref counted the three. So, yes, I mean, again, but that, that has, again, been uh, probably uh, gone over now by enough other people but just to give my quick thoughts on that i mean like yeah it was a bit of controversy but i still think overall the match though that gunther and randy still had was, was a really uh engaging match though for me i mean that was the the, the best match of, of the king and queen of the ring event without you know when i wouldn't say without a doubt but i would say like that in terms of a match quality standpoint delivered the best match for me <clears throat> you know closely behind you know Logan Paul and and uh you know and Cody's uh, match which i would say that was uh, also you know pretty good as well but um that the, the main event wasn't too bad but Cody you know did retain uh, the undisputed uh, universal championship too over Logan Paul, but th there was again a, a pretty good match, though. I mean, Logan Paul, like, like again, definitely had one of his best matches since again being in the WWE with the match he had with Cody there. So that was definitely one of more of his uh better performances, uh, being in the ring there with someone like Cody. So, uh, again, you give Cody credited for that, Cody gets credited for that, but uh. But but yeah, so and his frog splash, which you know, which Logan Paul again did from the announce table that you know with the prime bottle where he spat out, you know, he was he spitted out his bottle of prime everywhere as he went to uh, do the frog splash on uh, Cody Rhodes through the announce table was executed and that was like done really well by Logan Paul. So in the match during the match or towards the end of the match. But, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it, again, it was a good enough main event that Cody and Logan had there for King and Queen of the Ring, a, a satisfying enough main event. Not, again, as good as Randy versus Gunther's match, uh, but, but still, like, it, it delivered still a pretty interesting main event, despite it, again, just coming off being predictable by the, by the finish when you get to the end. But Cody, again, did have to, you know, give Logan Paul uh, three crossroads uh, to finally put Logan, you know, down for the pin count, you know, for the one, the one, two, three. But, uh, but still, you know, Cody is, is just still continuing on with, with his reign as the uh, WWE uh, Undisputed Champion. And where it looks as though it is going now is that it does seem to be a rematch, a, a pending rematch with, with, again, with AJ Styles after SmackDown the other night, tried to, uh, to fake uh, a retirement where he lured uh, Cody in. He suckered Cody in by saying he was, you know, again, basically, you know, trying to, to uh, you know, to get fans thinking he was, again, just retiring AJ Styles, that his wrestling career is done. But that, again, was just, you know, a ploy by, by AJ to, to just basically set up again, just another, well, a, a rematch that's going to happen with Cody and AJ, which we could see that happening possibly at, WWE Clash at the Castle that I am going to but that is still something we are going to have to see probably next week to see how that uh you know how that comes together but 
but that was again done you know pretty well though by AJ he did make it you know he did try to make it seem convincing enough to the point where fans you know brought into it where fans brought into him actually retiring and again because again he had Cody come out he called Cody to to come down and Cody was raising his hand and all that and, and, and he you know just basically again put AJ over really he just basically put AJ over uh, pretty much there but uh, it, again it was just uh you know a good uh a good um heel moment there though by AJ and, and just cunning so uh there we go with that but um so so you know so it does again seem like we could be getting a rematch there for, for Cody and AJ at WWE Clash at the Castle for the undisputed uh, WWE Championship. And, and it would be, again, good to see that match being, you know, done or having it being run back, you know, one more time to, to, to uh, go back to that match because of how good their match was, you know, for, from WWE Backlash in France, in Lyon. Even though, again, you know, we'll have to see what happens. But, yeah, so, again, that that seems to be the direction, though, going uh for Cody uh, in it for his next uh, title defense, though, is to go against AJ. But you know, also as I said, in terms of like just the preview for the summer, then guys, just to get into that. Obviously, yes, we have WWE Clash at the Castle. That is going to be the first pay per view kicking thing, starting things off. Uh, with me going to uh, WWE Clash at the Castle. I am going to be there up in Scotland, Clash at the Castle in S Scotland, in two weeks' uh, time, or just over two weeks. And again, the funny thing is, again, that this year it is going to be also uh, around my birthday as well. And uh, it's, it's actually the day before my birthday that we're going to be up there. And again, for the Friday Night Smackdown as well. The Smackdown uh, before my birthday. So, uh, so what my plan... Well, what, what I, I am thinking of doing... Which I might as well say now. I am actually thinking, guys, that I am going to do a special predictions video and preview video from when we get to Glasgow on uh, the Thursday... And I'm going to try and see if I can do a short preview and a prediction stand for WWE Clash at the Castle when I am actually there in Glasgow. Um, and that, that's going to be super exciting. Well, not super exciting, but I'm looking forward to it. And But as I said, it's, it's going to be a pretty busy time anyway because, again, my birthday being around then as well, well, being the next day, the, the day after WWE Clash at the Castle. But again, we do have, like I said, two matches that are, again, confirmed for Clash at the Castle because we will have Damian Priest uh, to, set to defend the uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. He is set to defend uh, that against his, his uh, title on the line against uh, Drew McIntyre that didn't again come to much surprise and then on Smackdown just recently on Smackdown Friday Night Smackdown this past week well the other night that uh, Bailey has found out that uh, that Piper Niven is going to be getting a WWE Women's uh, title shot championship match against Bailey in Scotland at Clash at the Castle there as well. So again, you are going to be having two Scottish uh, representatives. Well, again, Drew going after the main World Heavyweight Championship against Damian Priest and you know and Piper going after Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship belt. So so uh, those are just the first two matches that I have seen uh, being announced uh, so far for Clash at the Castle. So I, I, I again, can definitely maybe see that we could again be getting this, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles rematch, that, that there is a possibility they could do that. They could be doing that for Clash at the Castle. And a possibly again, maybe they'll have, you know, Liv Morgan facing somebody at Clash at the Castle as well. 
uh, you know, she might have a title. She might defend uh, the Women's uh, World Championship against someone. Because I did forget to mention that. But, I mean, Liv Morgan also became the new uh, WWE Women's World Champion. And she defeated Becky Lynch uh, twice because uh, she beat Becky Lynch to win the WWE Women's World Championship at King and Queen of the Ring. She ended uh, Becky's reign, a uh, short reign. And then she, uh, the next night on Monday Night Raw, she again defeated Becky Lynch inside a steel cage in a steel cage match, where afterwards uh, she uh, gave uh, Dirty Dom, you know, a, a kiss a, a or a hot kiss, whatever you want to say there about that. But, but uh, yeah, so, um, so you had that going on with Liv there. And, and Dominic, but uh, but that, that that was hilarious. I mean, that was pretty funny, with just Dom's uh, reactions to to all of that. But uh, and that how again it, it it does still seem like the seeds are planted again, just for Dom to be aligned. That Dom Mysterio is going to be aligned uh, with Liv Morgan and possibly the Judgment Day as well. The rest of the Judgment Day, you know, with Finn Balor and and JD. Because, again, I mean, Damien Priest is is still kind of, like I said, you know, <clears throat> kind of a mix right now between being a heel and, you know, trying to be, you know, a baby face as well. Like, he's still trying to act, you know, basically tough. But, uh, but yeah, so, so just basically... But that is what I see going forward at the moment for Clash at the Castle. Getting back to Clash at the Castle, that we could get... You know the AJ Styles and uh, and Cody rematch happening there. Possibly again, Liv Morgan defending the Women's World Championship, maybe. But again, that's uh, we're gonna have to wait and see. But she did defend. She did actually uh, defend the SmackDown Women's Championship two years ago at Clash at the Castle in Cardiff in Wales against uh, Shayna Baszler, so we'll see. I mean, you know, we'll see if uh, Liv has a match or not there. And also, it's going to be interesting if Sami Zayn, it, you know, might defend uh, the Intercontinental Championship as well, which possibly, again, seems like that's going to be against Chad, you know, against Chad Gable again. But we'll see again what happens with Monday Night Raw coming up, uh, it, you know, uh that comes up tomorrow night on the, the first Monday Night Raw of June. But, uh, yeah, so... So, like I said, we'll have Clash at the Castle. That comes in just under two weeks' time on Saturday, uh, the 15th of June. But I will, again, come on here, you know, just before that we go, before that I travel to Scotland, up to Scotland, I will try to do one more video just to kind of... Uh, just to sort of, again, go over my uh, plans for that in terms of, again, like what's just going to be uh, happening. But as I said before, I'm definitely thinking right now of, of trying to do a preview and predictions actually coming that I'm going to record, you know, from Glasgow, from when I get up there, when I am there. So uh, that's going to, again, make it a little bit, you know, different. That'll definitely make it a bit more different. So uh, that, that that's something different that I haven't done before. So, um, so there you go uh, with that. Even though, again, I, I might, again, be a little bit probably, you know, excited. And I'm probably going to be a bit all over the place. Because, as I said, we are going to be, you know, travelling as well. So, I'll just, again, have to see how I feel when I get up there. But I should be all right enough, though, to still probably do uh, predictions, like I said, uh, up there, though, when I'm in Glasgow. So, uh, there we go for that. But, again, then, moving on, after we have Clash at the Castle, we will then, of course, have Money in the Bank, which is going to be in Toronto, from the Scotty Bank Arena in Toronto this year. That comes from Canada. Before then, the WWE, of, we then, of course, have SummerSlam. That comes on the uh, first weekend of August on a Saturday. No, that's on Saturday, the 2nd of August, I believe. And, uh, and then that we all end things off then with, of course, uh, WWE's first uh, premium live event in Germany. 
that they're going to be having, which again is going to be a bash in Berlin, in Berlin on uh, the 29th of August, or was it the 30th of August? Right at the end of August. And that then, you know, does then take us just sort of then into September. And uh, pretty much, again, just covers, you know, uh, the summer then. And, and I, I don't know, again, what pay-per-view might be uh, lined up yet for September or for October yet. Unless, again, if they might have, like, fast slain like they did last year to have that maybe be in October. And again, they, they are going to have a crown jewel in November because, again, they mentioned that at WWE King and Queen of the Ring. Of course, we're going to get Survivor Series War Games as well. Survivor Series War Games coming back again with the War Games uh, matches uh, in November or near the end of November. That will be, of course, again, the last uh, PLE event of uh, of the year of, of of this year of 2024 but again that is again still looking a little bit further on well at, beyond the summer but yeah but either way just again like I, I definitely think the wwe right now is is still just feeling like pretty uh exciting right now that this is still it you know exciting an exciting place to be at the moment but uh for the in terms of WWE, but uh, but just quickly transitioning over to AW now. Of course, with AW, they have got two big events coming up that I'll just quickly touch on. They have that they are going to be doing a Forbidden Door again this month at the end of June. I, I think that might be on the, the last weekend of June. Yes, that that is on. Sunday the 30th of June, I th I believe uh, that they are having again Forbidden Door, AW Forbidden Door, where they have, of course, you know, their um, crossover, <clears throat> the crossover event with New Japan, well, collaboration event with New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the main event has been confirmed for that too. That uh, because we found out from AW Dynamite this week, which I did not, you know, tune into but i did uh see that will osprey is the new uh number one contender he is going to be facing swerve strickland for the aw world championship at forbidden door um because he won this uh casino gauntlet match to earn a title shot a world championship match and to face uh swerve and, and that, that is again going to be a refreshing uh, main event definitely for aw i think that's a main event that fans will uh will be uh intrigued on uh for, for different reasons and now there has been a little bit of debate on you know why they're doing this match you know right now or why they're doing the match like earlier early while well, doing it for, for forbidden door because surely again you would have thought that they would wait or that they would save this match until you know with, with swerve against osprey to happen again at like aw all in at the end of Wembley, but that's, you know, going to kind of lead into a segue because of course, at the end of August on, on the 25th of August, that is when AW will be having a all in again at Wembley stadium. So that is like their other big event. So what I probably do see happening is that I, I somehow can see that Swerve is going to find a way to retain. Uh, I mean, I'm going to pop. I, I know again, I, I shouldn't do my predictions yet. I shouldn't give like a prediction for the match yet for Forbidden Door. But uh, I do think maybe that Swerve though will retain at Forbidden Door. And then they'll have a rematch possibly again. You know, Swerve facing Will Ospreay again. That you could somehow set up for for, for all in. AW all in. Then you have Osprey getting his rematch there. Then you could have Osprey then become, you know, the new AEW World. They could cash in on Will Osprey becoming the AEW World Champion at All In in we at Wembley uh, against Swerve. Like, 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 I, I definitely think that could be how they're gonna set things up. But 
again, like, like I said, I, I don't want to go too much into that now because I might try to see if I can do like a quick preview or predictions for AW Forbidden Door because I still know again that, you know, I haven't really like covered that much of AW this year in general, even though the last thing again, which I did touch on again, was about, you know, Swerve when he became uh, the new AEW world champion back at AEW Dynasty uh, back in April. So that was kind of the last thing I touched on, you know, on my channel. But again, AEW still obviously has definitely still been like, uh, still kind of up and down just in terms of like where they are still. Like it still kind of seems like they're fluttering at times. It still seems right now like, they seem to make some strides, AEW, but then, as as we did see over the last few weeks before Double or Nothing on the weekend, that, again, like, uh, you know, ratings were just uh, struggling for AEW, like, Dynamite's ratings were struggling and weren't doing that well. And, again, not having, you know, not selling out and, and not being able to sell out arenas and, and all that like their, their arenas and that, their tickets, not doing that well in terms of ticket sales, uh, you know, before, prior to Double or Nothing, that was uh, last weekend, but, uh, but but still, which again, that was the, 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 the five-year anniversary of AEW's uh, first uh, pay-per-view, the first Double or Nothing uh, from 2019, that was back in 2019, so... But uh, but still, I, I still think, again, AEW has a lot that they can be proud of still, though, with what they've done in, in these last five years in terms of, like, them just trying to be an alternative, that they've tried to be that alternative to the WWE style, the WWE product. So, uh, product... So that, 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 that's what I would say there with AEW. I mean, like I still said before, like, like I, I wouldn't again say that there's as much buzz or that there's still that same type of level of interest I have with AEW now or currently compared to what most of us had like two, three years ago or even four years ago, just like when AEW was just still like so fresh and just still so... Like, you know, and they were just doing really well. But but I do think, again, like, they are trying to improve on things, you know, gradually again, AEW. And I just think, again, that you have to give them, a, you know, a, you know, we have to still give them a chance. Well, not a chance, but we just have to see what, what they can do coming up now uh, this summer. Because again, this will be a big summer for AW2. I mean, I, I know that I'm kind of going over what's happening with WWE just a, a, a tad bit more. I, like, I'm going over that a little bit more because, you know, because I'm actually going to be going again to see WWE Clash at the Castle, as I said, in two weeks' time, which that's the reason why I'm going over WWE a little bit more, talking about WWE more than with AEW. But but yeah, so I, I just think again, if they could just slowly again, just try to get some momentum as they head into this uh, AEW Forbidden Door. And of course then, the big one of heading into AEW All In, which that will be in August because I don't believe or I don't think that they've got a pay-per-view event happening in July, AEW. So I do think after Forbidden Door that that might be their last pay-per-view before All In at Wembley Stadium then when they go to All In at Wembley. So uh, for that again, so for the second year in a row. So... Uh, they will have again, at least again, they will have that month or so just to build up a lot then and just to get that excitement leading up to uh, to All In this year. So the All In this year, the All In event at Wembley Stadium. But uh, there we go for that. So that's just uh, pretty much again the things I wanted to cover on though and just to preview 
what's happening with both WWE and AEW right now. Well, their summer, you know, the summer preview for both companies and how both companies are looking going into this summer. I still think, again, right now, the momentum does still seem to be mostly with WWE, siding with WWE still. That they just seem to be in a bit more of, of a like a good rhythm, but but I still think again like AEW again are, are, are trying to get up there again. They that they have been trying to improve on things, so it's gonna just again make for just a, an interesting summer, a fascinating summer for for both company for both of these. Uh, Again, both of these companies, uh, the two major companies in in pro in professional wrestling, uh, in the professional wrestling uh, industry. So uh, there we go. So I think us fans have a lot. We have you know quite a bit to look forward to with both companies. Again, whether you're pro WWE or pro AEW, like again, or this tribalism or whatever it is, but. I'm just trying again to, to just be like, you know, as level as I can like in terms of going over both WWE and AEW. But but obviously, yeah, like I, I do have a little bit more interest for WWE right now. But still, like I still think AEW uh, are getting pretty good again as well at the moment. But we, we will see. I mean, we will see what happens. But... Uh, Either way, like like I've pointed out, it's it's going to be a big summer for for both companies, and a, a big direction that both companies are heading into. They're both going into uh, you know, into uh, an exciting summer coming, and there we go for for that a, a, an exciting summer of twenty twenty four that we're into and just lastly guys before i do close out with this video that i just wanted to mention it's 10 years ago today can you believe that we had the shield uh breaking up the implosion of the shield of roman reigns dean ambrose and seth rollins that happened uh, on this day 10 years ago on the 2nd of june uh, 2014 so I just thought I'd very quickly uh, mention that as well because that was uh, what happened on this day uh, 10 years ago, a decade ago because we were on the 2nd of June 2024 today. And like I said, it, it's 10 years on since, uh, you know, when Seth Rollins, you know, you know, infamously uh, turned on Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose to, to side with the authority uh, you know, with Triple H. And, uh, yeah, so I might again put a little thing on that, on my TikTok account, maybe. But uh, I might do what well, I'll see. So so check out on my TikTok again, guys, because don't forget, I also have a TikTok account as well. I have a link to that that you can uh, click on to when you go on to my, you know, my bio page or when you go on to my... Uh, onto that page you know you will see my links there i have onto my uh, various social media platforms again facebook tiktok now and again you know my youtube channel so uh but but there we are guys i mean that is it uh, for this video but again my, my tiktok account is under my uh, normal name like i said so it's not under my wrestling name well, not under my, you know, kayfabe name I use on here, but it is actually my, uh, my, my, yeah, my legit name. But, but still, you know, uh, you know, you can see that on there anyway. Well, you can see on the link when you click on to, to the link or go to the link there to see on, on like the, the bio page, like, which again that has about the info that that's like where you can see the uh the description my channel description and all that that's where i have the links you know well you guys know i mean again like i don't know why i'm telling you this because you know everybody knows you know where to to find links and all that but but still so 
that is it though guys uh, for this video so just again another uh, just huge thank you and an apology guys and owing you an apology for just uh you know for, for not uh doing any you know recent videos in these last uh two three weeks but still we're coming again now just into a busy time now again where things just are going to be uh heating up in, into the summer now so you can expect there to be some few more videos coming. As I said, next week now, sometime I should be try. I, I should try to come back up then to make one last video before I go up to travel to Scotland for WWE Clash at the Castle. And I'm gonna go over just again about the plans of what I'm gonna be doing up there. You know, obviously, well, not what we're gonna be doing, but like. The merchandise that I might be buying as well. And uh, and all, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's it though guys in this video. And also what I'll be wearing. What t-shirt I'll have on. So. And just what, what I'm going to be wearing up there. But, but anyway as I said you can you know expect that video to be. Uh, I, I will record that video next week. The week before going up there. When we travel up there, because I'm, I'm going again with my mum, because me and my mum are, are both uh, going there to see it together. So I'll have my mum there with me too, <laughs> which uh, I don't know if that's embarrassing to bring that up. But, but anyway, yeah, so again, enough of me repeating, but uh, that's it, guys. So like I said, again, don't forget to like, comment and to uh, again, subscribe. If you're new to this channel, well, or, or this is your first time viewing a video on here on my channel, Wrestling Fan for Life 98. Subscribe to Wrestling Fan for Life 98. And, uh, and as always, that's it. So that's it, guys. Now get out of here.